Howdy folks, it's Richie here, and today I'm going to be showing everything related to the Hall of Monuments. There was a lot of talk before Guild Wars 2 released about getting the Hall of Monuments achievements in Guild Wars 1 to unlock all these goodies and what they were going to be and how they were going to look. Well, today I'm going to show you everything. And uh, one of the things I wanted to show is a character should have a portal stone if they successfully linked their Guild Wars 1 to Guild Wars 2. You can see it here, Hall of Monuments portal stone. And if you did not get one of these automatically, uh, you can go into Lion's Arch and you go up into the northwest corner to Hooligan's Root over here. And there is a vendor, a karma vendor in here that will actually sell you the portal stone for free. Um, it's this guy right here, Scornheart. And you go to the second vendor tab and the Hall of Monument Stone. So you can snag one there if you don't have one. And this sure. portal stone basically allows you to teleport directly to the Eye of the North. Now this is going to be very nostalgic for players of Guild Wars 1. As you see, I'll put a little overlay here so that you can see what it looks like in Guild Wars 1 compared to Guild Wars 2. It is largely the same. They've kept a lot of the architecture and, you know, different elements. And even the NPCs are familiar. May you find the path. So here's Artificer Mullenix. Welcome to the Eye of the North. And, of course, now he's a ghost instead of flesh and bone. But it's still great to be able to interact with these uh, NPCs that, you know, some folks have been interacting with for years and years. Okay, we have uh, Stacy over here who used to sell the runes. But she doesn't have any more runes, unfortunately. But she's still here. Yes. And Mika Ferguson, who used to do all of the skills. You could actually buy skills and different things from him. He's still in the game as well. So it's cool little nods to these characters that people have grown to love. All right, now this Black Widow Spider is here because this is one of the Ranger pets I've unlocked. So they actually just hang out here. Uh, Black Moa is another one. There are four Ranger pets that you can unlock for doing Guild Wars 1 Hall of Monuments things. Uh, this is the White Raven. This is the, four, uh, the third. There is one more Ranger pet that I'll show you in a minute. As we walk our way over here, you'll notice the Zunlai chests are still available. You can't actually go in them, but there is some familiar text. Talk to a Zunlai agent to activate your storage account today. So once again, just a little nod for those of you who have played Guild Wars 1. I got stuck over there. Alright, the cool thing is um, these achievements and stuff are still unlockable. You can still go to Guild Wars 1 and unlock your Hall of Monuments achievements and you will still get these uh, rewards that I'm going to show you uh, in Guild Wars 2. Alright, so there's a loading screen in Guild Wars 1 here. Not so in Guild Wars 2, but this is the actual Hall of Monuments. This is where all of the trophies and stuff that you got to display from Guild Wars 1 would hang out in the tapestries. And you can see now a lot of it is just rubble and cobwebs. And then the scrying pool in the center, which revealed a lot of the plot elements. Okay, here's the last of the ranger pets. This is the uh, rainbow jellyfish that you can unlock. That's an aquatic pet, obviously. All right, and then we have uh, Kim's the historian. All right, and now he's going to show me the right legacy. Now he's kept all of these items for someone who. Uh, can finally prove their worth and show that Talk they have descended from a hero or whatnot. So, let's take a look at what they, he has to offer. So here he's just describing they belong to a hero who earned all these relics during their life. And he waited centuries for someone who embodies the same heroism. And you are that person. Lucky me. Alright, and this is kind of showing him how he, you know passed away and stuff like that. Alright, so here's the vendor. Nothing costs anything here and you can repeatedly get these items from the vendor. Uh, so you don't have to worry about like running out or anything like that. You, these are reusable things. Most of them are just skins. And there's PvP versions as well if you want to take the looks of these items into your structured PvP matches. Alright, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to uh, take out a copy of each of the heavy heritage set which um, obviously since I'm a warrior here those are the ones I can wear so I'm just gonna take each one of these heavy pieces there is a heritage set for medium and light armor as well I'll show you that in a little bit later 
I think I just bought the wrong piece there. Yep, yep, I brought the wrong one. So let's fix that. And we get the shoulders and the helm. Alright, so what these are, you just click them and it basically works kind of like a transmutation stone. You combine the look of this skin with your current equipment and it will give you the look of this item and keep the stats of the item you're wearing. So these are skins only, so folks who played Guild Wars 1 don't have any kind of statistical advantage over anybody else. It's just for cosmetic stuff. So it works like that. You double click on the piece, then you drag the item you want to look like it, and it makes a new item. And voila. And you'll see the, the pieces little by little changing on my paper doll on the right, but I'll show you the whole thing when we're done. Okay, do the gloves. It's my destiny. It is his destiny. All right, do the chest piece, now we do the legs, and then we'll finish off with the booties. Okay, so here's here's the heritage set for heavy armor peoples. Uh, it definitely makes you look, you know, a little bit more imposing, a little bit more impressive. I've turned the helmet on here, and there we go. Now I'm ready for some action. So again, just a nice little nod to the folks who uh, have played Guild Wars 1 or put forth the effort to unlock the Hall of Monument rewards. You just get some cool skins. You're going to be able to get great skins if you didn't do this if just by playing Guild Wars 2. But this is just something, you know, for everybody else uh, for who actually, you know, played the first game. Now, these are my die choices that I have right now. I'm doing like a red and black kind of thing. Obviously, this set will look much different. If you change the colors, I'll just demonstrate that real quick. Let's say green, and we'll go with like a lighter non-black kind of thing. We'll do the matte color here. They're just two of the starter colors. But you see what I mean? You can you can totally look different with the set depending on what choices you pick. But I like what I had better. Before <laughs> I like what I had before better. All right, so let's look at some of the other things they have in here. There's all uh, weapon skins. And there's actually some more gloves and uh, helms as well. So we're just going to take some stuff out here. There are some um, other ones of weapons I don't actually have. I'll, f I'll find a way to show you what they look like later. All right, so let's just take a couple of these skins. Okay, the dragon sword, the shield. Okay, this is the mask. There's a mask for each of the armor wearers. Alright, rifle. I'm just going through the ones that uh, I know the warrior can equip. Okay, here's another glove. Another helm, sword, There's lots of stuff. Lots and lots of stuff. It's actually really cool uh, being a warrior and uh, checking out the Hall of Monuments because the warriors use so many different types of weapons. A lot of these skins are uh, are usable by Enough, me. Sir. All right, so let's take a look at what we got. kind of want to find a place that has a little bit more light. Let's do it over here. Okay, so let's see. The hammer on our back is very plain. So let's bring out Icebreaker. Icebreaker is the uh, the hammer skin, if I can find it. There it is. All right, so let's, let's change this up. Oh, yeah. Time to beat some heads in. Yeah, that thing looks pretty impressive. The funny thing is every time I, I apply these skins to an item, sure enough, like five minutes later, I find a uh, a, a better weapon. <laughs> I find myself teleporting back to the Holy Monuments quite often. All right, this is the, uh, the Flaming Swords. This is for one-handed swords. I didn't actually have to apply the skin because I already had these in my backpack, but you can see the effect of these is really awesome. 
You can kind of get your, your writ lock going, right? So that's awesome. I love the flaming swords. I have people whisper me all the time, How'd you get that? Alright, this is the uh, the Diamond Aegis Shield skin. I love how I turned off the one sword there and the lighting in the environment actually changed significantly. So that's what the Diamond Shield looks like. Alright, next up. We're gonna check out the rifle. The wheel lock rifle skin. Alright, let's go shoot something. Shoot! Alright, that's a pretty cool looking gun. Alright, the Deldramore Mace. I already have one of these, I think. Where is it? Oh, I'll just make a new one. Oh yeah, I, oh yeah, I have two. Here we go. Alright, these things look incredibly painful to smack someone in the face with. That would leave a mark for sure. Except when you're blocking with them. Because that doesn't leave a big mark. Alright, I have an axe already made. This is the Stygian axe. These are the uh, one-handed axe skin. So you can see that looks pretty awesome as well. I gotta find some new adjectives. I think I'm saying awesome a lot. Maybe I'm not. I can't tell. I can't remember. <laughs> Alright, uh, <laughs> next. Let's see, what should we do next? Oh, we got the longbow here. This is the Ithis longbow. Dwang. Wish you could die the weapons. That would be pretty cool. Alright, this is the uh, Warhorn. We're gonna, where is it? Alright, so we're going to make the Mountain Call Warhorn. I like how he puts his uh, the horn to his lips and actually says the word faster. Faster. <laughs> faster. <laughs> how does that work exactly? All right, so that's the mountain call horn skin. Let's see, do I have any others? Oh yeah, the uh, two-handed the great sword. This was probably the only one I was a little disappointed in. One challenge um, down. I mean, it definitely it definitely looks imposing, but it's nothing spectacular. It it. Basically, you you kind of look like Siegfried from Soul Calibur, and uh, yeah, that about sums it up. Or Nightmare, if you prefer. All right, I think that was all the weapons that I could equip. So let's look at the other um, skins for the the gloves and the head. All right, so this is going to be the Baroque mask. And that didn't seem to do anything. Huh. Oh, that's weird. Look, it, it changed it on my on the preview, but not not uh fixed. I guess the heavy Baroque mask is actually Baroque. <laughs> uh, sorry. That's really weird. I don't know why that's not working like that. Alright, I guess we'll look at it in the uh the hero pain. So that's what the mask looks like. <laughs> Ta-da! All right, and what else we got? We've got the uh, the heavenly heavy bracers. These are for your gloves. 
Okay, I'll transform, put those on. Alright, so that's what these look like here. They give you little wings. There's actually like a bust of an angel on there. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let's, um, let me change the dye on it. Maybe you could see it clearer. We'll change it to something lighter. Let's see. Yeah, you can see that a little better, I think. So those look pretty cool. All right, so we had the Heritage Gauntlets before. There's one more gauntlet. Uh, these are the Fire Gods Heavy Van Braces. They sounded posing. All right, so these have a fire effect going on around them. They look pretty awesome as well. Looks like a little demon guy or something. So, definitely cool. I've got fire hands. And this is the last one, I think. The Ice Lord's Heavy Diadem. And it's a helm, so we know how well they work. Let's see, is this going to work this time? It worked here. No. <laughs> Didn't work in, uh, on my character, but you can see in the preview, it's like an icy crown thingy. All right, let's go uh, back to the vendor. Show you some of the other things. Jump on this lily pad. Can I can I share this lily pad with you? All right, let's see. What do we what do we need? Um, all right, so there's also mini pets you can get from here. So we'll take a look at them. There are four of them. So there's four ranger pets and uh, four mini pets. Now, if anybody's not familiar, you got to have 30 points in your Hall of Monuments to unlock all of the physical rewards like this. You can actually get 50 points in the Hall of Monuments, and that unlocks uh, from 30 to 50, you get new titles. There are also some titles from getting from, you know, 1 to 30 as well. Um, but that really doesn't have anything to do with being in the Hall of Monuments here. All right, so first pet is a tabby cat, orange tabby cat. You know, the internet loves cats, so that's, uh, I've named them Dubstep Cat, of course. This is probably my favorite. This is the miniature Orion baby chicken. It's an undead chicken. The cutest and creepiest little thing you'll ever find in the game. The thing has creepy sound effects. <laughs> Alright, we've got the, uh, miniature... Rock for a raccoon. I like how he scampers. And the final is the miniature servitor Gollum. He makes a lot of noise. The only thing I don't like about the mini pets is every time you deposit all collectibles, these things go to your bank, and it drives me nuts. I need one of those. I need a way to prevent that. I think, is there a bag that doesn't allow it to go in? I'm not sure if there's a specialty bag that does that, but that would be handy. All right, so those are the four mini pets. Okay, so now let me show you the skins for the weapons I can't actually equip myself. I can do that... Um, by looking at the preview on the on the PvP gear, which is cool. So this is going to be let's do the uh, the heritage set first. This is going to be for the light armor heritage set. And again, you'll be able to play with your dye colors if you actually have the set, so you don't have to. If you don't like the mustard set that I'm equipping right now, I'm missing the helm here. There we go. So that is the heritage set for the light armor peoples. All right, let's do the medium. As my golem makes chitter chattery noises. 
Man, I don't know about those striped pants. It's a good thing, it's a good thing the coat covers it a bit. Looked like a zoot suit. All right, here's the uh, here's the medium armor heritage set. Actually, looks pretty awesome. All right, I'm gonna take the chicken out instead of the robot that's driving me crazy with those noises. Now the chicken, now the chicken's going crazy. All right, this is the gnarled uh, walking staff. This is the staff skin that you get. All right, and realize you'll have a Pv PvE version of it as well. This is the living short bow. It looks like a big stick with some leaves on it. I can see Solvari liking that. Or maybe the Solvari would hate that, thinking that's like some sort of weird form of cannibalism, but not with eating. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, here are the, here are the masks for the uh, light and the medium. They're, they're all very, very similar. No more Baroque joke jokes, I promise. All right, here's the dagger. This is Centurion's Claw. It's kind of hard to see because of my armor. Maybe if I equip a different armor, it won't cut through. No, it still does. Oh, well, you can kind of get the idea. It is an interesting... looking weapon. All right, here is the uh, scepter. The Wayward Wand Scepter. You can kind of see it there hanging out of my rear a little bit. We got the pistol. This pistol actually looks like a skeletal fish. Which is kind of cool. It's the Sea Thunder pistol. Alright, these are the heavenly bracers again for light and for medium. Here comes the medium. They look very, very similar. And they might even be the same model. Diamond Prism Focus. Which is just kind of like stabbing me in the hip there. And of course the light. Whoa. Whoa. Weird graphic in the chest area. I don't think it's supposed to do that. That's just not right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna move on. <laughs> Alright, here is the torch. Alright, you can kind of see it. It's the flaming beacon. And then we have the uh, those fiery gauntlet things for both the light and the medium. I think the graphic on these is the same. Yeah, it looks it looks the same. All right, just want to show you real quick the uh, achievements page. You can see here uh, this is my achievements panel, and down on the bottom left there is a Hall of Monuments tab, and you can see I am getting different achievement points for how many points in Guild Wars One I've achieved. Uh, there are titles associated with each of these tiers. You can see the ones I didn't get were the Ghostly Hero for 35, Flame Seeker, Legend of the Mists, and Champion of the Gods. You can see how to put these titles on your character right here. So the ones I did get were Traveler, Guild Warrior, Rift Warden, Chosen, Ascendant, and Closer to the Stars. Again, these are just names you can display with your character to show that you have played Guild Wars 1 in the past. And with that, I'm going to wrap things up. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it with your friends. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can be notified when future videos are released. And please uh, post any questions or comments to give me feedback in the comments field below. And you can find me in Google+, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. I'll put all the contact information in the description. Until next time, guys, it's Bog Otter signing out.